There's something about the water. The way the light reflects off of it and makes it shimmer. The way the paddle dips in, making little funnels and pushing the canoe forward. There was really something about the serenity of being in the back country um, that stood out to me. We'd spend the morning packing up our things, loading up the kayaks in just the precise way, and after all the excitement of pushing off, we'd be out in the water paddling, sometimes for hours on end with nothing but loons calling in the distance and the water lapping against the side of the boat and just the swinging of our paddles and the chatter of the group across the lake. Um, there's something in that you never really forget. for me really was the deluxe meals we had in the back country. There's nothing like a gourmet meal after a long day of paddling. And that really was sort of the culmination of weeks of planning, um, shopping for food, cutting up veggies, dehydrating, um, weighing and portioning everything out, reweighing, and then being able to assemble that for our group of eight in the back country with just two pans, stove and a barbecue um, was super satisfying. We started the bow on circuit with a portage, 60 pounds per canoe and the rest of our gear on our backs. This was going to be a long 116 kilometers. I have such fond memories of the Bowron Lake circuit. Many hours of tough portaging and paddling were rewarded with views of rugged mountains, majestic lakes, romantic rivers, and splendid sunrises and sunsets, Rita's delicious home-cooked meals that all tasted gourmet to me, and restful nights falling asleep to the sound of lapping lake water and sometimes rushing creeks. After an exhausting day, my thin sleeping pad felt amazing and I was more than happy to crawl into bed. How does it taste? We developed a camaraderie and together enjoyed gloriously sunny days, some thunder and rainstorms with wind that threatened to blow our canoes away. Often, we would silently drift along the shorelines, hoping to spot bears, but they were elusive. Yet, every night, I was certain there must be a bear lurking behind every tree along the path to the outhouse. Clearly, a wild imagination was not lacking on my part. Very swampy, you can get out. Hey, Will, Willie, 
Stadium, you jump out. Get out. Is it actually a beaver dam? I think I lost my phone. Hours of preparing, dehydrating, meal planning <laughs> resulted in fabulous meals every night of our camping trip. They never, they never, they never. Okay, there you go. Jason, you want some pie? It's spicy, it hardly has any spice in it. You got zumbo? A little bit of zumbo and a little bit of ketchup. It was delicious. Barbecued steak, barbecued chicken. From dehydrated ground beef, we made macaroni and spaghetti. It was just an amazing experience, camping like a king. What's this going to be? I don't know. It's leftovers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry, Tina. Yeah. That's fine. I thought it could be tough, too tiring or scary for me. One day in an overpopulated, flat, crowded homeland and another day into a vast mountainous area with spectacular scenery, it took my breath away. did not encounter a bear. Only the mice nibbled on my candle bars I noticed when getting the food out of the bear catch the next morning. How the gang regretted having given me the instruction book on how to pass a, a shoot. <laughs> <laughs> 
seeing me so stressed. I also think back to the endless doing over the shoot. Many discussions and debates were had over the best method. Our goal was to stay dry. It turned out to be easy peasy though. In the end, with sweaty palms and racing hearts, we all navigated the chute and successfully paddled our canoes down the river, looking for yet other adventures. I think our few days on Lake Glenesi were some of the most memorable I can ever remember, particularly when it comes to nature and you realize um, how helpless you can be um, when nature um, is in effect. And that was um, that night we arrived at the Glenesi campsite. The heat and the ash and the soot came sweeping down the mountainside and fine ashes literally crept into everything in our tents, um, in the shelter. And there was a storm coming across the lake, with lightning and thunder and rain. And we really thought there wouldn't be anywhere that we could turn to um, if the fire really did in fact come over the mountain. And it makes you realize just how insignificant you are.
Our last few days on the Bowron circuit were pretty, but mostly uneventful. Lazy sunsets and misty mornings, easy portages were a sweet relief after the rough trails and hills that we had to cross during the first few days. Day after day of paddling, sometimes the waters were calm, sometimes the waters rough and challenging to navigate. I recall one particular evening, after an intense day of paddling, that I could hardly even hold a fork to eat dinner. Hi guys! We were constantly on the lookout for a moose, but the only wildlife we really saw was a beaver, various birds and some ducks. Last night here, it's pretty wet. On the morning after our final night, we woke to a cold and drizzly day. Fortunately, it was the first time that we had to paddle in the rain, and we were not so concerned about getting wet gear. Barren Lake, the final lake of the circuit, was a tough lake to paddle. The rain didn't stop, and the wind was picking up. At this point, we were all rather cold and quite determined to conquer this final lake before the storm became too rough. The sight of Becker's Lodge and pulling up to the shore brought on a cheer of welcome relief. To be paddling through the wilderness for days on end was the experience of a lifetime. <laughs> 